inferior one, but you have kept the good one until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs at Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, good morning. As always, thank you for making Jesus a priority in your day today, for joining us for this Mass. As we finish one week and begin a new one, my prayer is that we can continue to really keep Jesus that priority, especially on the weekdays in the midst of the grind. But also, as a result of this Gospel, I pray that we can also place Mary at the forefront of our minds and hearts as well. And let me explain why. I took a straw poll from quite a few people about what it was that struck them about this particular gospel. And even before the primary message of the gospel, i.e. Jesus' first miracle, right? The majority of those that I polled got hung up on the fact that Jesus seemingly disrespected his mother, right? By calling her woman, right? So I've decided to make that the primary focus of today's homily. What if I told you, brothers and sisters, that Jesus bestows a huge honor on his mother Mary in the gospel during this wedding at Cana? Right? At first, it might be difficult to see the honor that Jesus gives to Mary when he says, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. Now, for us Americans especially, perhaps we receive those words from Jesus with apprehension, right? Maybe a little bit of shock, maybe a little bit of disdain. But, brothers and sisters, that's because we are looking at it with the eyes of culture. We're looking at it with the eyes of culture, and we're also looking at it with the eyes of society, right? Not with the eyes of faith. In our culture, it would be disrespectful to address any lady as woman, right? Above all, one's mother as woman. But throughout the Gospels, Jesus called many ladies woman, right? Matthew, Luke, John, all throughout the Gospels. Jesus intends to teach us something when he calls Mary woman. He does it for us. Think about it. The first woman in the Old Testament is Eve. And in Genesis, God says to the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. Brothers and sisters, God is telling the serpent that there will be hostility between the serpent and the woman. And the woman's offspring, Jesus, will strike the head of the serpent, the woman's offspring, who will strike that serpent once again, is Jesus. Everything Jesus did, every miracle, everything he preached was striking at Satan. While the first woman, Eve, failed in the contest between her and the devil, Jesus, the offspring of the first woman of the new covenant, will indeed defeat Satan. So it seems that Jesus is deliberately calling Mary woman at Cana to highlight Mary as the woman of the new covenant, just as Eve had been the woman of the Old Testament. Right Later on in John's Gospel, we also read that as Jesus was dying on the cross, he said, Woman, behold your son. Behold your mother. It was Jesus' way of asking his friend, the Apostle John, to look after his mother. And John did look after her. From that hour, he took Mary into his home. We also, brothers and sisters, understand this to mean that Jesus was giving his mother to us as our spiritual mother. Mary now has a new role. As well as the mother of Jesus, she is also the mother of the church. So at Cana, when Jesus calls Mary woman, it means that, that her role as mother of Jesus 
will be expanded. But it's only when we hear Jesus' words at the cross, woman, behold your son, behold your mother, that we fully understand. She is transitioning from the mother of Jesus to then be the mother of us all. And thanks be to God for that. So Jesus' title, woman, for his mother Mary, was in fact describing Mary's role, cooperating with God's plan for salvation. She became, as I know you've all heard before, God willing, she became the new Eve, the woman who fixed what the first woman, Eve, had broken. Just as Jesus is sometimes called the new Adam, right, by comparison with Adam of the Old Testament, likewise, Mary is the new Eve, the woman of the new covenant. And it's pretty amazing, brothers and sisters, how perspectives can change when we dive deep into Scripture. Amen? There is one more time when Mary is described as woman. It's in Revelation. Mary is at the very beginning of Scripture in Genesis, which we just heard about. But she's also at the very end of Scripture in Revelation. In Revelation, John receives a vision of a woman in heaven giving birth to a child, Jesus, who would rule the whole world. And then there's this dragon, Satan, who tries to make war on the child. At the end of that very particular vision, John saw the dragon also trying to attack the offspring of the woman. Brothers and sisters, those offspring are her spiritual children. Those offspring are all of us. So Mary in heaven continues to be our spiritual mother. We are her offspring. She's bringing us to spiritual birth in her son, Jesus. Mary in heaven continues to intercede for us, and we rightly call her Queen of Heaven and Queen of Earth. And more particularly here, Our Lady of Wisdom. Jesus gives a big, big honor to his mother during the wedding of Canaan. He's not berating her. He's not disrespecting her. He's honoring her. He calls her the first woman of the new covenant. And again at Calvary, as the first woman of the new covenant, she becomes mother of the church, spiritual mother of us all. Brothers and sisters, woe to those of us who do not continue to grow in our relationship with the Blessed Mother. You'll hear me say this a lot. The Blessed Mother is the head crusher of the enemy. And she can crush the head of the enemy in your lives as well. Love her. Learn more about her. And flee to her when you are in trouble. Flee to her when you are sad. Because she can protect you. And more than anything, she is the one that guides us to her son. Amen.